Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Attack at the airport. New details emerging about the troubled past few months of the accused in the case. Just one day after declaring a state of emergency, Governor Snyder announces he will visit the Frazier sinkhole. And just a little more than two hours to go. We're going to take you live to Seattle as the Lions look for their first road playoff win in the Super Bowl era. Good to have you with us this Saturday night at 6. The Lions ended the regular season, of course, losing three straight. None of it matters now. You're right. The Lions enter tonight a big underdog, and tonight is pretty much do or die, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, it's winner take all tonight. That's the way it is in the playoffs in the NFL. The wait is worse than the actual game, but in a couple of hours, the wait will be over. Lions against the Seahawks. Wild card playoff game, 8-15 kickoff. Seahawks were favored by eight in some places. That number has climbed to nine. But none of that really matters because you know the saying, on any given Saturday night, Something like yeah, that. Something. Anyone can win in the NFL. There's great anticipation for the game on both sides, so let's head out to Seattle where Jamie Edmonds is standing by live on what you can expect tonight. Hi, Jamie. Hi there, Bernie. We are in Seattle for the big matchup. Things are starting to get exciting. The Lions have taken the field for pregame warm-ups. Now, we were outside CenturyLink Field earlier on today talking to fans, and, man, they're loud. Good. The brats were burning. The crabs were cooking. Seattle fans went to great lengths to gear up for the big game. All day, every day, it's all man brown. Everyone was super friendly, probably because they don't think the Lions even have a shot. We're in 12 Nation, so every team in the country is scared to come here. But Lions fans say, that's fine. We're good being the underdogs. If I go statistically, I think we're in trouble. It's a home field here and stuff. But that's, I was telling my buddy Joe that I just feel in my heart that we're going to put it together today. Lions fans may have been few and far between, but they're mighty, and they say their roar will be heard. I think the Seahawks are just going to take one and take an L today. Just going to lose. Above those of the 12. Seahawks! At least they'll try. Seahawks! And, and yes, those 12th men, they're, they're loud. I'm joined by Mike Tirico. You can hear them heckling the Lions players as they're coming out. This is going to be a tough place to play. You can hear them all the way around town. I know you were around town and saw that. This is a really neat environment. It's one of the toughest ones in the league. But the Lions being here last year for the Monday night game, the ball batted out of the back of the end zone. They know. We what, remember that. Mike. Yeah, so do I. Trust <laughs> me. They know, they know what's coming. So they know what to be prepared for. So I don't think it will overwhelm them. But this is as loud a playoff experience as we have in the league. Okay, Mike Tirico, he'll be on NBC. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait, I need to take over for a second. Okay. Can you tell me about the fish you caught yesterday? How do you know about that? Look, I've got friends in high places. So Bernie actually decided to come to work today, and he <laughs> told me. So get, we've got the tape back in the studio. Can you give me the play-by-play -play of the catch it's now known as around okay, town? Okay, well, they sort of lobbed it over to me, and I <laughs> caught it, and I was shocked as anybody. <laughs> and frankly, that was my Super Bowl. That was it? Oh, congratulations. It's a moment that... Metro Detroit will never forget. Congratulations, Jamie. Thank you so Good much. Spot. Wow. <laughs> wow. This is my moment. But we still want to talk to you about the lines just a little bit okay. longer. Okay. okay. So Bye. football night in America. Mike Tirico, you're going to be on our air doing that in just a bit. I saw you talking to Matthew Stafford over there. What are you talking about? Well, we talked about the weather, first of all, because it could have been rainy and damp, and that's always a concern, especially with his finger. But look, the numbers are down. He went from 67% completions to about 59 since the finger injury. Uh, so the fact that it's not raining right now, I think will help uh, a lot little bit but it's managing the noise and we were talking about that Dan Orlovsky was there too and that experience that they've had here will help them I think in this game when they do all the stuff at the line of scrimmage. He hasn't been that successful against teams with winning yeah. records. Mm -hmm. I mean he knows the stats. Yeah. What does he say to things like that? You know I, I think it's not him. We, we only pin and we're guilty of it when we call games or do studio shows. We only put one loss records on head coaches and quarterbacks. Uh, it's everybody. I mean this has been a team that hasn't had enough talent to win those games. He can do it. Uh, Detroit's very lucky. You've got a franchise quarterback back in town. Uh, the question is building around him. And I think getting to the playoffs two out of three years, three times in six years, these are building blocks. Now, at some point, Matthew's going to lead this team to one of those moments you'll never forget, and that will be the next step in his growth. It'll happen. I don't know if it's going to happen tonight, but I really do believe it'll happen. I think a big key will be that running game. If they can get Zach Zenner going, I mean, he is their number one right now, and then doesn't that help Matthew Stafford? 
no doubt. Remember, you're down to your third running back for the Lions because of the injuries, Abdullah and Riddick. The offensive line has a bunch of young guys playing up front, but so does Seattle's. If you watch the game tonight, offensive line play. Both offensive lines are really young. No playoff experience for the most part. Whichever one holds up against a really good defensive line from Seattle and a pretty good one from Detroit, that's going to turn the tide in this game. So if the Lions can give Matthew some time and let Zenner run a little bit early on, they will stay in this game until the fourth quarter, and we know they're confident when Pretty they get Pretty good there. in the fourth quarter. That's right, NFL record. Okay, so Mike Tirico, Football Night in America. I could learn a lot from your broadcasting career. If you want to learn how to catch a fish, you call me. You got that? All right. Say bye, Bernie. <laughs> bye, Bernie. Thanks for coming to work today. Jamie and I appreciate it, pal. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. See you at 730, buddy. All right, thanks, Jamie. We'll see you later in sports. There you go. Nice. He's the man. Now it's the catch. The catch. It is the catch. <laughs> but D- Dwight Clark out. In the corner. Jamie <laughs> Evans fish in. That's right. great. All Fantastic. right, cool. Well, we, uh, we sent Steve Garagiola out to check uh, the confidence level of fans heading into tonight's game. He joins us live from 24 seconds in Berkeley. And Steve, do Lions fans uh, still believe in this team, or do they think, oh, it's the same old Lions? No, well, I, I should be fair, a little bit of both. But, you know, if the predictable, logical thing always happened in sports, it wouldn't be very interesting. So I really do think a lot of people think the Lions can surprise some folks tonight because Seattle is beatable. I'm at 24 seconds. We're in Berkeley. A lot of Honolulu blue and silver in the room. And uh, some mixed feelings about what we can expect tonight. As these fans settle in for a night of football, it's not about just being hopeful. A Lions victory is inevitable. I had a dream. 48-27. What? No, it's a dream. It's a dream. <laughs> Lions by seven. Lions by seven. He's going to roll his right fire. Caught. Touchdown. True enough, the Lions are coming off a not-so-great game, which has tested our confidence. I mean, I'm hoping, but you never know. Lions, they, you know. You can't even bring yourself to say yeah. it. <laughs> so you don't have much confidence in the Lions no. tonight. Seattle by 13. Oh, oh ow, ow. Hey, enough of that. Let's have some more reasonable predictions. For, let's say, 24-22. Doesn't matter, just by no, two. Right, that's what I came up with, Lions by two. It's a wild card, anything happens. It's the wild card. Anything can happen. Now, I'm not confident the Lions are going to put 48 points on the board tonight, like that fellow who had a dream last night. But that was a great dream. But I honestly am confident the Lions are going to surprise people tonight, and I think they are going to beat Seattle. Seattle is beatable. In spite of their crowd and all that business, I think the Lions will win and move on. But, you know, we'll see what the believe meter says at about 11.45. We'll check in with you then. Back to you guys. <laughs> You're right, Steve, and they're not the old Seattle, vintage Seattle, yeah. so they yeah. do have a chance. I'm with you, Steve. I think they'll win by three, but like you, you said. You got a light blue bottle of Kool-Aid somewhere around you there. <laughs> We've been drinking are, it. Have been known We've to been drinking with. it. <laughs> <laughs> he can't hear me. It's so loud there. All right. Uh, we will check in with Steve a little bit later on, but I like the way he's thinking. Yeah. Weather could certainly play a factor in tonight's game. Yeah, we heard Mike Tirico just say it's yeah. dry right now, but Ben, we could see some snow a little later in the game. Very shortly, uh, Kim and Devin. They talk about the crowd being the 12th man in Seattle. Mother Nature may be 13, depending on how this plays out, but you see all this moisture heading right for Seattle. CenturyLink will spot it right there in the middle of the city there with the football. That's where it is right now. Even though the radar showing returns. Uh, we're not getting anything falling from the clouds right now. Still some pretty dry air at the surface. Here's a live look inside the stadium. Current temperature there 36 degrees. We've got a 14 mile an hour wind, so it does feel like it's 27 there in Seattle, and we expect once that precipitation starts falling, temperatures will start dropping close to the freezing mark as we get into the game. In fact, that's what we've got for a kickoff temperature here at 31. Numbers will actually be rising because there's some warm air coming in. We'll eventually turn that snow to rain, but I think anything that falls during the game is going to be snow. Nothing significant as far as accumulation goes. Back home tonight, we will see our clouds break up, flurries ending, and we'll get into the single digits. Double digit wind chills tonight. We'll look at that in your four zone forecast coming up, guys. Okay, Ben, we're following breaking news on Detroit's east side. That's where a woman has been found dead in her own basement with her throat slashed. A friend found the woman uh, in her home, Golden Gate Street, which is just east of Woodward. Nick Monticelli is there live with uh, what police have learned about this so far. Nick.
Devin, good evening to you. Unfortunately, police are still trying to find out exactly what happened and how this woman died. This happened all here, as you mentioned, on the east side. And a friend actually came to pick something up when he found 49-year-old Avril Taylor. Paramedics arrived, and they said, wait a minute, this is a murder. And that is when detectives were called. On what could have been a pleasant weekend, family and friends are gathered here on a cold street corner because Avril Taylor is gone. A warm, loving woman. She helped her community out. She didn't have too much family. All these people that's out here right now is just all people that she helped. Jasmine Jones is Taylor's niece and says she lived in her east side home for about two years, helping everyone she could. She threw parties to the, the homeless at her house. We had, she just was really loving. So everybody in the community loved her. That's why so many people out here right now. Around one o'clock this afternoon, a friend came here to borrow something but instead he found 49 year old Taylor dead in her basement. They don't know who did this yet. Detectives say it does not look like somebody broke in and even worse, sources say her throat was cut. A neighbor does say there has been trouble here once before. She had just had a robbery just before the fall had started. Somebody had broken into her house and ain't nobody in the neighborhood ain't know who it was. Now that may have absolutely nothing to do with her murder, but her niece, daughter, sister, and the rest of her friends and family are hoping for quick answers. I just want people to know that she will want us to know the truth about what happened. The neighbors have also told us they have seen some strange vehicles parked outside of her home over the past couple of weeks. So if you noticed anything or know anything about Miss Taylor's murder, please call Crime Stoppers. That number is 1-800-SPEAK-UP. We are live on Detroit's East Side. Nick Monticelli, Local 4. All right, Nick, we'll of course follow that story throughout the weekend. Just a day after declaring a state of emergency, Governor Snyder announces plans to visit Frazier. New tonight when the governor plans to get a look at the damage that sinkhole has caused. Also, we're learning more about the troubled past few months for the man accused in the Fort Lauderdale airport shootings from yesterday. We'll have that for you when we come right back on Local 4 News at 6. What will it there is new information emerging this evening in the Fort Lauderdale airport attack. The Iraq war veteran accused of killing five people at that airport apparently chose to travel to Florida to carry out the rampage. The 26 year old suspect Esteban Santiago had a history of acting erratically. Investigators are probing whether mental illness played a role. Meanwhile, we caught up with some folks who flew to Detroit Metro from Fort Lauderdale. The only thing that surprised me is the police presence wasn't as big as I thought it was going to be there. I saw a few, but nothing like I was expecting. Other Detroiters who traveled from Florida said that they encountered several long lines in the Fort Lauderdale airport. Governor Snyder is going to meet Macomb County officials tomorrow in Frazier to get an update on the sinkhole that the state says threatens 200,000 homes now and businesses in a, across 11 communities. And it also now includes Selfridge Air National Guard Base. On Friday, the governor declared a state of emergency there in Frazier. That declaration could bring state and federal dollars to repair the sinkhole. New at 6. We've got more live coverage coming up from Seattle as we move closer to kickoff playoffs. Start tonight for the Lions. That they do. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Say more. Yes, you're counting down right with us. A little less now than two hours before kickoff. And let's take a live look inside Century League Field. Oh, I thought we were going to look inside Century Link Field. That's in okay. Seattle. We're there. Jamie's there. We are <laughs> there. And the uh, players are on the field warming up. Indeed. And uh, it's dry right now there. But, Ben, as you mentioned, there might soon be some snow. Yeah, it's a very similar to what we see where the radar shows the moisture first and it takes a while for those low levels to get moist. And that's what's going to happen out there. But for us, it's just going to be cold. So uh, get used to that. We are at 15 right now, and that's what the thermometer says. Wind chills outside pretty close to zero, and in some cases below that mark. Four below in Pontiac, minus one there in Flint, two above. Uh, is what we've got at Metro. And even though temperatures are expected to be very similar uh, tonight to what we had last night, the winds are going to be stronger uh, beyond this little wave that's sort of rotating through tonight. There's not a whole lot in the way of uh, moisture with it. 
We're having some data issues, but you can still see that there's a couple flakes out here that are going to start to roll through here in the evening hours. Flurry of snow showers, so be it. No accumulation expected out of that. Uh, if maybe a coating in the ground in some cases, and that's going to be about it. But the clouds will break up after that. The winds will pick up, and we're going to see wind chills double digits below zero in some places as we get into tomorrow. So going into Monday and Tuesday, that's the next big system that comes through, and this is going to give us a solid couple, maybe three inches of snow early on Tuesday. So the morning commute is going to be snowy and slow going, but temperatures will change that over to rain right about the lunch hour. And so the drive home is just going to be sloppy and slushy as everything is just sort of a mess on the roads on Tuesday. Tonight, though, five degrees, skies partly cloudy. And again, a couple flurries around as that wave rolls through. After that, we will be dry overnight Four zone forecast. We're going to look at wind chills early tomorrow morning. Hard to believe, but these are some of the best that we could find. Four, five, six below zero in our metro zone. Look at the numbers out in Lenaway County tomorrow morning. Ten below in Onstead. The rest of them are pretty close to that. West zone, you're going to be the coldest, one of the coldest. Twelve below in Howe is how it's going to feel. Eleven below in Brighton. And in our north zone, very similar numbers. Anywhere between about ten below in Waterford, thirteen below in Ortonville. And the lake keeping everybody just a little bit milder on the east side. Daytime highs going to 20 as we get into the afternoon, and then we look for those warmer temperatures to show up after the snow on Tuesday, hitting 42, and then getting better than that on Thursday at 45. So more rain than snow yeah. in that seven day <laughs> yeah, forecast. Yeah. Bernie said sweating. I'm sweating already by Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I can't believe it. All right. Uh, hey, your shot of a CenturyLink uh, you got field. It Here it is. I should have asked. Fire you. it up. We know. Oh. oh, come on. There you have it. There's. Is that Stafford? It is Matthew Stafford. Let me see that right hand. Are you okay? Are you all right? We'll talk about him coming up. Tonight. All right, whatever happened up until this point, as far as the season goes, it's behind us. We can't even worry I'm about right. it, right? It's, it's, no, that's it's, not true. No, it is true. It is true. <laughs> I just want to see the reaction. <laughs> what? Well, the NFL, as you know, playoff football is a different animal. There's a different feel, a different intensity. There are only 12 teams left. Everyone has a shot at the Super Bowl. The Lions know what playoff football is all about. It's always tough. It's always gritty. Um, playoffs are different. You know, it just kind of goes to another level of acceleration almost in every phase. Right now, it's only 12 teams in the tournament, and we're one of them. So everybody got the same chance to win. You just got to go play the game. 8-15 kickoff. Lions come into the game having lost their last three games of the regular season. They've never won at CenturyLink Link Field in Seattle. They've lost eight playoff games in a row, and they're eight-point underdogs. How'd you like to play, though, Mrs. Lincoln? Huh? <laughs> but Matthew Stafford says none of that matters. It's a new season. He says this is very much like your Xbox when you hit the reset button. You see teams that lose three or four or lose four or five or, and go win the Super Bowl. You see teams get hot at the end of the season and go win it. You know, it's can't really tell. I mean, it's, it's all matchups and, uh, and, you know, a new season pretty much. There you go, Matthew Stafford, 8-15 kickoff. Obviously, it's a big game for the Lions. Also, a big game for Golden Tate. He came here from Seattle after winning a Super Bowl there. And now he returns to the city where he first made his name, standing by live in Seattle with, with, the, with the return of the Golden Child as our own Golden Child, Jamie Edmonds. Hi, Jamie. Oh, hey. I Hey, I like that golden child. I don't know if Golden Tate is the golden child of this city anymore because when people found out that we were from Detroit, they brought up Golden Tate and they said, Lions, you can have them. Makes a move. Doug Baldwin. Touchdown. They're no doubt a, a great team, um, especially on defense. They have a bunch of great leaders, uh, great athletes. Um, they've been there. They've won Super Bowls. They've been to playoffs. That's what they're used to. The defense known as the Legion of Boom hits hard plays fast and has a reputation, but Tate isn't concerned. As far as intimidation, I, you know, I'm not really intimidated. Maybe it's because I know those guys personally on a, on a deeper level, but um, you know, I think confidence, they're, they're definitely a confident team. And when it comes to reputations, how about the 12th man, the Seattle fans? Well, they bring it louder than any other NFL stadium. It's definitely a loud, emotional place with a lot of passion um, and it's hard it's hard um, I think we've done a great job of preparing this week and try to simulate the noise as much as we, can, we possibly can and you know, we'll see how it goes 
All right, I think this guy is happy that Golden Tate is with the Lions. It is the president of the Lions, Rod Wood. Thanks for joining me. My pleasure. All right, so this is fun. This is playoffs. This is what you want. We have a question. We don't see Martha Ford all that much. We see her with the sunglasses. What's she like during games? Uh, she's a fan, and she's uh, watching intently with her family, and uh, rooting on the team is uh, probably the biggest fan the Lions have. Has taking on this presidency been more challenging than you thought it would be from that initial press conference when we met you? Uh, I don't know if it's been more challenging. It, I can't almost remember when I wasn't doing this. <laughs> it's intense. Uh, it's a lot of fun, uh, a lot to do. I think we've accomplished a lot in the first year. We're building a good foundation, I think, for the team going forward. I'm really excited about where we are. I'm excited to be here playing tonight, um, and I'm looking forward to it. All right, we think Bob Quinn put a lot of pieces into play here, and that is why the Lions are here. Long flight from Detroit. Wouldn't it be so much nicer if it was a W? It would be uh, a lot shorter flight going back if we were going back to get ready to go to Dallas next weekend. Okay, and Jim Caldwell, you're keeping him. He's the Lions guy. Easy decision? Uh, it was an easy decision. Uh, I think Bob uh, really was happy with the decision. Um, I'm not sure why it was such a big story. I mean, he is our coach. We're in the playoffs. Um, I think it was a distraction. So. Right. He's in. The Lions are here. Rod Wood is in. The game is starting shortly on our air. Back to you. All right. Thanks, Jamie. Good seeing you. Uh, college basketball this afternoon. Penn State beat Michigan State 72-63 at the Palestra in Philly. Maryland beat Michigan 77-70 in the NBA. Pistons Blazers postponed in Portland. Bad weather. Huh? Yes, Portland. in severe. Far away. Indoors. Huh? Indoors. Yeah, Indoors. Well, yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, <what's that>? Hey, <laughs> you're using my material. Hey, hey. 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 <laughs> All right, a lot to come here, obviously. Thanks for watching Local 4 News at 6. NBC Nightly News is coming up next. Join us right back here tonight after the Lions game for a special edition of Local 4 News. We'll see you then.